And that is Kofi Kuranting. He is a Ghanaian activist and a politician. Mr. Kuranting graduated from Ghanaian primary and junior high schools before crossing the ocean to pursue a study in economics in London. He chose to complete his economic studies at New York University, where he earned a degree in economics and business. Kofi Kuranting has remained active for the cause of the Ghanaians in the diaspora. Over the years, he has held several positions for this community, including Chief Executive Officer of the Progressive Alliance Movement, PAM, a US-based non-political advocacy group. You remember that group. That is the group that sponsored some of its members to take a suit to get the court to pronounce that Ghanaians living abroad are entitled to be registered where they live and to vote from where they live, as spelled out in the law. He was the first president of Ahimfie Association, a Ghanaian community-based organization fusing Ghanaian culture with American lifestyle and many more. Kofi Kranting carries within himself the fire of democratic ideals and is determined to be a mentor for Ghanaians to succeed within the borders of Ghana as well as throughout the diaspora. Kofi, it's no longer, perhaps if that was true, whining. He has been back in the country and seeking to be president. He speaks on the topic towards the Ghana I seek, which is the main theme for today's Change Speaker series. Kofi, you welcome. My good friend, Mr. Samson Anyanini, thank you so much. And uh, with all the news file crew and leadership, thanks for having me here. Uh, I'm inspired. Samson, by the speakers, my esteemed panelists. And what I have, what I have heard this morning, uh, I, I'm blown away. Mm. It's, it's a confirmation that it's worth it to keep fighting because there is a better Ghana uh, that we all seek. And it's worth it. You, 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 you are not alone. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kojo Pumpunia Santi says, what a refreshing morning. Gifty Ando Apia says, imagine that we have just 10 of Ibrahims in the north. The biggest Correct. part of solving our problems is how we think. And he is culturally shaping the minds of young people. And that's just super. Dr. Kwame Akufu Anof in tow is saying the Ibrahim Mahama presentation was very good, well thought out and presented. And he's asking whether new file and joy management, we have thought about putting change speakers together in a book. Kofi Kuranting, let's hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Samson. Let me just activate this thing. Good morning. Uh, and thank you for inviting me to speak to Ghanaians on the theme of towards the Ghana I seek. Uh, Samson, I must thank you so much uh, uh, the host of News File and, of course, Kenan Sa, the Chief Operating Officer, for their invitation uh, to speak uh, on this Joy Change Speaker Series 6, Diaspora Edition. As an avid viewer of News File, I am aware that guests should address issues bordering on life's lessons, especially to guide the youth, religious, social, cultural, governance, economic management, job creation, law and justice, parliament, party politics, security, agriculture, topics needing attention in my, and it's my firm belief that those in the diaspora and those at home, all the topics are intertwined and we must address each as it affects the other. Let's begin with the first point, life's lessons to guide the youth. No adult can seriously offer guidance to the youth in a nation where they are not offered hope and opportunity. All the other topics noted, 
governance, economic management, job creation, law and justice, parliament, party politics, security, agriculture must be addressed first to offer the youth guidance, hope and opportunity. The news file platform suggests that current events should be reflected in the panelist presentation. Ghana has recently made international news with issues that directly affect all citizens of Ghana as well as the youth. The United States CBS network featured the citizens of Ghana and its youth on their premier show called Sunday Morning. The focus of the story was how Ghana has become a landfill for the world's e-waste. In presenting the story, the journalist showed video of Ghana youngsters engaging helping adults strip the carcasses of computers, printers, cell phones, and other technology. The goal is to salvage sellable parts before the useless plastic housing and contaminated glassware is left to rot in the once pristine land of Ghana. It showed Ghanaian youth who were not even of secondary school age burning the insulation from wires to retrieve the sellable copper a process that produces noxious smoke and air pollution for those engaged and all around. The youth of this nation see this practice as their opportunity and hope. They are engaged in it out of necessity because the government of Ghana has and continues to fail to deliver for Ghanaians, their children and the future of our nation. The reporter for CBS News noted that Ghana is also a repository of used clothes and tires from the thriving economies around the world. The burning of tires and the landfills of clothing each present a unique pollution challenge that leads to health problems for Ghanaians. Even the pristine air, land, and water of Ghana is now polluted. I mentioned earlier that all topics are intertwined. If we begin to unravel them, they all lead back to an inept, corrupt government. Can e-waste reclamation create sustainable livelihoods for the youth of Ghana? Not the way it's being performed now. Let's imagine that Ghana had a government committed to the well-being of its citizens. That that government of Ghana would seek to modernize e-waste reclamation with investments in technologies, research, and development. It would seek out and invite international corporations to put in place clean, sustainable processes of e-waste reclamation. Ghana can create an industry out of e-waste reclamation with a government that is determined to protect the environment offer opportunity for sustainable living wage jobs and produce viable recycled exports. Can Ghana create an industry of exportable products from the used ties that now pollute our air, land, and water, causing irreparable damage to the health of our youth? I say yes, it can. A responsible, actionable government can invest in research, technology, and development to turn used ties into recycled rubber building blocks, beams, benches, and more that can be exported back to the world that sent it. Can Ghana become a leader in recycling used clothes into new textiles? Again, I say yes, it can. A responsible, actionable government can invest in research, technology, and development to turn used clothes into thread, textiles, and cloth with innovative, pollution-free, sustainable processes. It takes a government of vision, action, and commitment. Remember, all things are intertwined. This brings us to the scourge of illegal mining, as our friends and panelists have said. Again, 
And then the industry that attracts not only the young, but all ages of Ghanaians who lack hope and opportunity. Galamse is a glaring example of the failure of an inept government that is mirrored in corruption. Every election, a solution is promised. Every year, Galamse continues to offer dangerous jobs to Ghanaians while officials look away and spend their illegal payments. Every Ghanaian knows how and why Galamse occurs and the damage it does to the clean water, land, and air of our, the nation. It is all intertwined, a two-party system that allows each other to profit as they exchange administrations, leaving Ghanaians and its youth to fall deeper and deeper into poverty and despair. The annual salary perks an ex gratia of one MP equals more than the wages of 55 hardworking Ghanaians. I believe that all things are intertwined and the two controlling parties of Ghana who have traded power between themselves for over three decades are inexplicably one and the same, a government of neglect, Samson. An international news headlines, Ghana is gaining infamy. To go along with the Ghanaian children of the e-waste, CBS News featured Ghana again in a story about our prized agricultural export, cocoa. In the U.S., the shocking revelation of the story was that a preeminent candy company, Mars, was buying Ghana cocoa harvested by children as young as five. The CBS reporter visited multiple farms to be sure it was not an isolated incident and at each of the farms visited, found children as young as five wielding machetes and harvesting cocoa in the blistering heat. Ghana has been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Ghanaian cocoa, a prized export in demand throughout the world, has suffered a black eye on the international stage. It, is it intertwined with offering hope and opportunity to the youth? It is. The problem, my brothers and sisters, is that we as a people do not want five-year-olds to have the opportunity to sweat as laborers for substandard or any wage. We want Ghanaian five-year-old and all ages, even into adulthood, to have the hope and opportunity afforded to them by a modern, well-rounded, targeted educational system. Are we proud of cocoa production and the support we give to farmers? Yes, we are. However, we are not proud of being an exporter on the backs of five-year-old children working in the fields. Can Ghana do better? Yes. We need an agricultural ministry that is committed to supporting farms, one that institutes innovative, sustainable practices, which will make Ghana a leader in the supplier of food products to Africa and the world. Today, the world is craving superfoods such as acorn squash, purple rice, turnips, sweet and purple uh, potatoes, and other hearty vegetables that can be grown here in Ghana. Ghana can offer our youth the hope and opportunity that comes with plentiful diverse foods, as well as becoming a major agricultural exporter. It is all intertwined. The government of Ghana must be dedicated to healing the scars that they have ignored for over the last 30 years pollution from Galamse, e-waste, used clothing, and used ties, and turn them into opportunity and hope for our youth. The story is intertwined with all that is wrong in Ghana, a government of neglect with ruling parties who have one mission in mind, to create generational wealth for themselves and their families, not Ghanaians as a whole. Let's bring the government into focus in this discussion with the recent headline, Broke Ghana registers 618 delegates for COP28 in Dubai. 
Ghana, by all international monetary standards, is bankrupt, yet the government of corruption registered 618 delegates to attend a global warming conference in Dubai. At the conference, Ghana made a commitment to reduce methane emissions. All things are intertwined, right? Well, does that mean that Ghana is committed to stopping the burning of used ties and insulation from e-waste wires? You know as much as I do, of course not. Let's be realistic. The intent of the president and registered guest of Ghana to the Dubai conference is to live a lifestyle that the average Ghanaian cannot imagine. One day's worth of food and beverage for the esteemed Ghanaian global climate change fighters costs more than hundreds of households in Ghana for a year. Should Ghana be concerned and engaged in global climate discussion? Yes. How? Well, by electing engaged government officials who are concerned with serving the Ghanaian people and providing a future of hope and opportunity. Singapore and Dubai are examples of what is possible when the government invests in its people and not in enriching its officials. The government of Ghana and the next president must commit to a new economy with a foundation of a revitalized educational system with modern school buildings. No more teaching under trees. Our schools must offer well-rounded general studies programs that include sports, music, and arts facilities. Each district or region should feature premier schools for committed students and teachers who want to concentrate on technology. These will include the laboratories and facilities for exploration and invention of robotics, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, space travel, augmented reality, as well as computer coding and network. Ghana must lead Africa in sustainable innovations, research, science, medicine, advanced agricultural and food processing, and exploration, as well as become a center of finance, banking, and marketing. The government must commit to building and funding schools for essential trades for those who want to pursue careers as plumbers, electricians in urban planning and as heavy machine operators, auto mechanics, computer repair, broadcasting, visual arts, performing arts, teaching and government services. A strong society on the move requires an investment in its people, not its government officials or family or their families. Ghana gains its independence through the hard work and determination of people with visions and dreams. They did not envision creating an aristocracy or royalty. They imagined a nation where every citizen could be free. I know the first question on your mind is, Samson, how will you pay for this? I know it is a fair question. Remember, Everything is intertwined. The government of Ghana and the two-party system have redirected the monies needed to create a society on the move into the coffers of an entrenched bureaucracy which feeds itself. It is easier than one might expect to move from a government of neglect towards the Ghana I see. These ideas can be paid for by first electing honest stakeholders who share the Ghana we seek. It begins by reinventing the government, rooting out corruption, eliminating ex gratia and Article 71 payments. It continues with limiting the number of ministries and staff 
cutting the bureaucracy of the office of the president, auditing and eliminating wasteful spending and graft. We must also seek corruption-free private-public partnerships with Ghanaian companies as well as international companies that focus on cutting-edge technologies and sustainability in manufacturing, production, agriculture, and energy, of course. We must encourage corporations engage in pollution remediation to clean up our damaged land, waters, and oceans caused by the incompetency of the last 30 years of corrupt governments while becoming the world's leader as an innovative, pollution-free society. We must end the practice of e-waste dumping and encourage viable, clean solutions to successfully process and recycle e-waste. We must end the practice of importing used ties and clothing from the world without solutions. Ghana, by the way, is not the world's landfill. Used ties can be recycled cleanly into viable exports without destroying the health and environment of Ghanaians. The same for clothing. There are companies from India to Texas, USA, who are using innovative pollution-free processes to turn used clothing into exportable materials. Startups like this will avoid Ghana as long as the government of corruption remains in place. We must end illegal mining and demand that all permitted mining be performed pollution-free with 100% reclamation processes in place. The model of Ghana must be a robust leader in education, innovation, arts, tourism, and entertainment with an ethical welcoming government that enforces the laws to protect the health and well-being of all its citizens. The ghost hospital system and uncompleted housing projects are living shadows of what our incompetent, dishonest, corrupt government looks like. Instead of a ghost hospital system with thousands of beds that serve no one, Ghana can and will build a world-class hospital system that will encourage our healthcare professionals to stay home and not seek greener pastures in Europe, and Middle East and the Americas. This brings us to another recent headline in the news. Contractors abandon new Eastern Regional Hospital site over unpaid funds, December 12, 2023, as reported on Ghana Web. It tells the story of yet another addition to the ghost hospital system that the last couple administrations continue to build. The proposed 600-bed hospital for Eastern Region is less than 30% completed and was scheduled to open at the end of this month. It is another glaring example of the government of neglect. We do not know how many jobs the 600-bed hospital would have created. What we do know, though, is that these educated, trained healthcare professionals and doctors who would have staffed this facility will join the millions in the diaspora and help build a world-class healthcare for other nations. I touched upon education. Remember, all things are intertwined. As Ghana grows its educational system, it would also grow its healthcare system. Ghanaians deserve world-class healthcare. Our best and brightest are forced to leave their homeland to seek careers providing world-class healthcare for others. I thank you for the attention as I offered you a glimpse towards the Ghana I seek. I look forward 
to your questions and an ongoing dialogue towards the Ghana we all seek. Let us assure our youth that we can have a government that works towards independence, freedom, hope, and opportunity for one and all. Samson, God bless our homeland, Ghana. Thank you very Have much, uh, Kofi Kuranting, with that presentation. Uh, we've done quite a bit of time um, with the presentation. So let's continue to chew on. And we believe that as the most significant people also watching and listening, we will do what is right.